हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द मैथमेटिक्स क्लास टुडेज टॉपिक विल बी द सेकेंड चैप्टर दैट इज एक्सपोनेंट्स दो यू ऑल हैव स्टडीड दिस चैप्टर एक्सपोनेंट्स इन क्लास एट सो वी विल नॉट डिस्कस टू मच अबाउट द लॉज जस्ट वी विल रिवाइज आई हैव ऑलरेडी रिटर्न आई जस्ट डू द रिविजन एंड द बेसिक थिंग इज वी विल बी डूइंग few questions of different types so that you can build up your concept that has already laid the foundation has been laid in class 8 now first thing is if it is written a to the power n you all know that it means a is multiplied to itself how many times n times because n is this means a is multiplied to itself n times so here a means the base and n is known as power or index or exponent and this total a to the power n means exponential form any number is written in exponential form suppose i say 27 so 27 if it is asked to write in exponential form so that will be 3 to the power 3 or if it is 8 it is 2 to the power 3 so this is the exponential form 2 to the power 3 is exponential form of 8 3 to the power 3 is exponential form of 7 7 is a normal number whereas in first case 3 is the base as well as 3 is the power in the second case a is 8 is the number and 2 is the base and 3 is the power so i hope this is clear what is a base what is the power and the exponential form and all these things now this is the base this is the power or index or exponent so generally we will be using the term power that's very common now there are few laws that you have already studied again i'll revise it a to the power m into a to the power n when the bases are same and the powers are different so and uh, the these two are multiplied these two exponential forms are multiplied so we get a to the power m plus n means base is same but the powers are added in the second case there is a division sign so what happens the power gets subtracted m upon n means m minus n then a to the power m whole power n when the exponential form has one more power what happens these two powers get multiplied and you are getting a to the power m into n similarly ab to the power n means separate power a to the power n and separately b to the power n means you can break suppose i say 6 to the power 2 it means 6 can be written as 3 into 2 to the power 2 or you can say 3 to the power 2 into 2 to the power 2 3 to the power 2 is 9 2 to the power 2 is 4 and that makes 36 and we know that 6 square is also 36 so that is it now a to the power minus n can be written as 1 upon a to the power n or if it is given 1 upon a to the power minus n it will become a to the power n you can see this was the numerator part it the power got positive and it became to the denominator in this case the power was negative but the number was in denominator it moved to the numerator part and the power became positive now a to the power m upon n can be written as a to the power m into 1 upon n so a to the power m is exponential form and 1 upon n this can be written as nth root of a to the power m this is a new thing so please memorize it now we will be discussing few questions based on this so um just coming back with a question i think so i have taken the first question is if a b c is equal to 1 we have to show that 1 upon 1 plus a plus b to the power minus 1 plus 1 upon 1 plus b plus c to the power minus 1 plus 1 upon 1 plus c plus a to the power minus 1 is equal to 1 this is what we have to prove condition that is given is a b c is equal to 1 first of all we will convert these minus 1 in the form of plus or positive powers so this can be written as 1 upon 1 plus a plus 1 upon b plus 1 upon 1 plus b plus 1 upon c plus 1 upon 1 plus c plus 
1 upon a. Now, 1 upon b is there, 1 upon c is there, 1 upon a is there. In this one, if we take b as LCM, this will come as b upon b plus ab plus 1. And this is 1 upon 1 plus b. Now, let's hold on. So we have to eliminate the C part. How are we going to eliminate the C part? For that only, the condition A, B, C is given. Means, if it is given A, B, C is equal to 1, so you can say that 1 upon C can be written as A, B. This C moves to the denominator and A, B remains wherever where it was. So it becomes AB is equal to 1 upon C. So in place of 1 upon C, we can put AB. So I am writing AB in place of 1 upon C. Then moving ahead, 1 upon 1 plus. Now C can be written as, if 1 upon C is AB, so it means that you can say C can be written as 1 upon AB also. Or keep a c over here only and take a upon b to the other side. It will become to the denominator. So it is 1 upon a b. So in place of c, I am writing 1 upon a b and plus 1 upon a. Now this has already been solved. This has already been solved. Only this part is left. In this portion, we will be get Okay, I am writing it over here. That is b upon b plus a b plus 1 plus 1 upon 1 plus b plus a b plus here lcm will be a b so this will be a b upon a b plus 1 plus b i will solve this over here so 1 i am writing 1 upon 1 plus 1 upon a b plus 1 upon a lcm is a b so here you will get a b plus 1 plus b and it was upon 1 this a b moves to the numerator part so it is a b upon a b plus 1 plus b that is what it came now if you look to these numbers you will see that all the denominators are same, having three terms and same terms. Everywhere you will find 1, everywhere you will find B, and everywhere you will find AB. It means we can take these three denominators as LCM. So that will be 1 plus B plus AB. This and this divided, you get 1 multiplied by B. You will be getting B, similarly plus 1 plus a b now you can see that both numerator and denominator part are equal so we can cancel this as well as this and the final value is one that was required to be proved or to be shown and that has already been shown now we take out we take some other question like this only next question is if 9 to the power x plus 2 is equal to 720 plus 9 to the power x you have to find the value of 4 to the power x whole power 1 by x 4x whole power 1 by x this is what you have to find out now you know that when the okay 9 to the power x plus 2 is given as 720 plus 9 to the power x we know when the powers are added, it means the base are same. So we can separate them as a product. So this can be written as 9 to the power x into 9 to the power 2 is equal to 720 plus 9 to the power x. Now you can see that it has been broken into 9 to the power x into 9 square and here also it is 9 to the power x. So if you bring this 9 to the power x to this side, it will be easy, you will be getting a constant value. So what I am going to do, I will bring this 9 to the power x to the left hand side, so that and it will when it will come this side, it will become negative. So 9 to the power x 
इंटू नाइन स्क्वायर माइनस नाइन टू द पावर एक्स इज इक्वल टू सेवन ट्वेंटी फ्रॉम दीज टू दिस टर्म इफ आई टेक नाइन टू द पावर एक्स कॉमन हेयर ऑल्सो वी विल गेट अ पर्टिक्युलर न्यूमेरिकल वैल्यू सो दैट इज आई एम टेकिंग नाइन टू द पावर एक्स कॉमन and that becomes 9 square minus 1 is equal to 720 9 to the power x taken common so here what is left one only and here 9 square so 9 square minus 1 9 square as you all know it is 81 so 81 this is 80 okay i'm writing it 81 minus 1 is equal to 720 implies that 9 to the power x into 80 Is equal to seven twenty implies that nine to the power x is equal to seven twenty upon eighty zero zero cancel eight nine the seventy two implies that nine to the power x is equal to nine or nine to the power one. What we have done nine to the power x will do eighty eighty goes to that side becomes the denominator so eight nine the seventy two so nine to the power x can be written as nine to the power one when bases are equal. we know that we can equate the powers it implies that x is equal to 1 we got the value of x and here what was required if we get the value of x we will get the value of this expression now just substitute the value of x as 1 in the given expression so 4x to the power 1 upon x means 4 into 1 to the power 1 upon 1 or that is Four. That is the final value. So I hope this is clear to you. Now we'll take some other question of a different type. Next question I have taken fourth root of cube root of x square. This question is based on this law. You can see nth root of a to the power m can be written as a to the power m whole power one upon n and so on. so what i am going to do first of all this is fourth root it means it can be written as cube root of x square whole power 1 upon 4 according to the sixth law if you open it again this can be written as x square whole power 1 by 3 and again power 1 by 4 This was x square cube root, so it will be written as one upon three. This was fourth root, so it can be written as power one by four. Now you know that when it is a power of a power, they get multiplied. So finally, the value will be x square power one upon three into one upon four. That makes that makes x square to the power one upon twelve. One into one is one. Three goes at twelve, and this can be finally written as x to the power two upon twelve, and that is x to the power one upon six. That is the final value. Next question I have taken, and that is based on the fifth part. A to the power minus n can be written as one upon a to the power n. So here I have written. Root x to the power minus one into y into root y to the power minus one into z into root z to the power minus one into x. Now you know it is x to the power minus one. It means it can be written as one upon x. So I'm writing under root y upon x. Similarly, under root z upon y, and similarly under root x upon z. now all these are in the powers of 1 by 2 so simply you can say x sorry y upon x to the power 1 by 2 into z upon y to the power 1 by 2 into x upon y to the power 1 by 2 Now it means x to the power one by two here also x to the power one by two so these both of them will cancel each other y to the power one by two y to the power one by two cancel each other and sorry this was z 
z to the power 1 by 2 and z to the power 1 by 2 will cancel each other. So if you want to expand it, you can write it y to the power 1 by 2 upon x to the power 1 by 2 into z to the power 1 by 2 upon y to the power 1 by 2 into x to the power 1 by 2 upon z to the power 1 by 2. So all these will cancel z, z, x, x, y, y will cancel each other. Finally, the value is 1. That is what is required to prove. Now we will take some other question. Next question I am taking that if a to the power x is equal to b, b to the power y is equal to c and c to the power z is equal to again a. You can see a again. You have to prove that x, y, z is equal to 1. Means you have to show that x into y into z is equal to 1. So how are we going to proceed it? You can see the here also it is a, here also it is a. So it means that a to the power x into y into z can be written as a to the power x whole power y into z by this law, third law, a to the power m times n is equal to a to the power mn. So, a to the power, let us take this portion as m and both these two as n. So, it becomes a to the power m into n. You know that a to the power x is given to you as b. It means in this place, we can write b means b to the power x, sorry, y, z. And that is a to the power x, y, z. b to the power y, z can also be written as b to the power y whole power z. Again, same form, same uh, law, third one. b to the power y is given to you as c. So in place of this, we can say c to the power z is equal to a to the power x, y, z. And it is given that c to the power z is equal to a. So it means in place of c to the power z, we can say a. a means a to the power 1. Now you can see that when the, we know that when the bases are equal, powers are equated. Here a to the power is x, y, z. But it is equal to a to the power 1. So simply you can say that x into y into z is equal to 1. That is the proof. That was required to prove. That has been proved. Next we will take another question. Next question I am taking is if a to the power x is equal to b to the power y is equal to c to the power z. This is one thing given and b square is equal to ac. These two things are given. You have to show or you have to prove that y is equal to 2 times of xz upon x plus z. So first thing, if I say that three things are equal to each other, that can be equated to one more equal thing. So let us assume that a to the power x, that is already given, b to the power y, is equal to c to the power z, we can say let these three equal values be equal to some other value that is k. Now it means a to the power x also equal to k, b to the power y is also equal to k and c to the power z is also equal to k. From this we can say a can be written as k to the power 1 upon x. Why? Suppose I say that 5 square is equal to 25. So we can say that 5 is equal to 25 to the power 1 by 2. That makes a square root of 25. And that is again equal to 5. So according to the same basis, if a to the power x is equal to k, when power moves to the other side, it becomes in denominator or in 1 upon. So a can be written as k to the power 1 upon x. Similarly, b can be written as k to the power 1 upon y. And similarly, c can be written as k to the power 1 upon z. Like this. 
Now you have been given that b square is equal to ac. So we will put all these values in the second value that has been given. So b square is equal to ac. b is how much? k to the power 1 upon y and square is equal to a is k to the power 1 upon x into c is k to the power 1 upon z. Now here you can see that all the exponents have the same base. So it means you can say k to the power 2 upon y 1 upon y into 2 according to the product one. This third one m to the power n is mn. So 1 upon y into 2 is 2 upon y is equal to k to the power 1 upon x and 1 upon z means 1 upon x plus 1 upon z. Why? When the bases are same and the powers are uh, in this form, the powers get added. The very first law a to the power m into a to the power n. So a to the power m into a to the power n will become a to the power n plus n a to the power n plus n. Now when the bases are equal, we know that we can add the powers. So finally it comes out 2 upon y is equal to 1 upon x plus 1 upon z. Now you just solve it out. So it will become 2 upon y is equal to z plus x upon xz by taking the LCM. Cross multiply 2 times of xz upon z plus x is equal to y. So it means that 2 times of xz upon x plus z is equal to y and that was required to be proved. That has already been proved. So that finishes off your chapter exponents. I have tried to cover maximum questions that are there in your textbook. In case there is any problem, you can comment in the comment box. You can tell me the book name and exercise and question number. I will try to give the solution of that in case there is any doubt. Otherwise, please study hard, stay home, stay blessed and please subscribe also. Thank you.